Hey guys, Callum here. In today's video, we're going to be testing out some transparent resin from Nova 3D, specifically for monochrome LCD printers. And that is because it takes a little bit longer to cure than a standard LCD resin. They recommend a layer time of about six seconds, which is comparable to some of the more engineering type resins that you will see on the market. For me, what this means is it's probably a fairly proven resin that works for SLA, stereolithography, and they've maybe tweaked it slightly to make it cure a little bit faster than those uh, SLA resins would have done. But it means if you were to try and print it on a standard LCD screen, then it's going to take even longer. But that doesn't mean it's not durable. And it's actually how I'm going to test this resin because I have got resin already in my monochrome uh, printer. So I'm gonna go for the standard LCD bed and see if we can get some good prints off it. Anyway, without further ado, we jump across into the slicer G2 box and see if we can whip something up that works well for this resin. Let's go. Okay, so we're now over in G2 box and we have added the chandelier piece. The first thing I'm going to do is hollow it so it's not a solid block. Um, we hollow it with a wall thickness of two millimeters. And you can see that allows you to do that in YouTube box and gives you a little preview to show that everything has worked as it should. That all looks nice. Obviously, when you are printing hollow objects in, uh, in a resin printer, you have to be careful of creating suction cups. So I'm also going to add some little holes in the bottom to allow the air to escape. Um, we can do that with a dig hole function. If I dig the hole continuously and add hole like this, then I can just move around and I'm going to put four little holes around each of the outsides of the points. This top section isn't visible on the end part, so I don't need to keep the holes to try and fill them back in or anything. I can just have it like that. I'm going to go ahead and generate some supports. I know really you should sort of print things on angles for resin printers. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to try and print it upright because if it works, then obviously I could fit a three on a bed and it would be a little bit more efficient printing. For some reason, the support settings weren't working very well and so I've had to remove them manually. So on to the settings now. I normally print with about six seconds exposure time and the guy from Nova suggested that it needs about three times as much. So I'm going to go on the faster side of three times and go for a 15 second exposure time. I'll double the bottom exposure time to 80 seconds. And I'm also going to reduce some of the lifting speeds just to help reduce the forces at play when the build platform separates away from this new resin. Voila. Then we can slice it up, check that it's all looking like it should, and then move it over to the printer. So here's a quick look at the bottle. Obviously it's got some nice images there, so hopefully it lives up to those expectations. Also got some QR code that you can scan if you want to do some further investigation. Always got to give your resin a shake and then pour it down into the build vat. It's very bubbly and also very, very fluid. Very important not to have any bubbles, especially for clear resin. So I'm just gonna blow these out with a heat gun very, very quickly and then can get the print started. Okay, so the print's finished. Looks like it's worked out all right. Looks really clear. Uh, 16 hours, 34 minutes. So quite a long print, but obviously this is just a standard LCD printer. And they say the resin is designed for the uh, monochrome LCD ones, which obviously print faster. Let's have a look at them. Okay, so I've just cleaned the supports off, sort of. Uh, it's come out okay. Um, obviously the, the transparency is, is currently dull because of, I've, I've wiped it and it needs to be cleaned properly, potentially even given a, a coat of, of clear lacquer. But I think if, if it stays white and clear um, through, the, through the UV process, then this will be a fantastically transparent resin. One of the things I've noticed from the settings that I had is obviously there was overexposure and we've ended up with a sort of conglomeration here at the top uh, where the, the supports have all fused together into the model because it was obviously slightly overexposed. 
also we've ended up with this little print defect but having since run another print in a different orientation it does seem that this is a mechanical fault so I'll ignore this it, uh, it doesn't matter for this model anyway and it's certainly not a reflection of the resin okay I'm now giving it a clean in some kitchen cleaner and I'm now going to put it in the UV curing station also known as a nail curing Give it plenty of time in there. Okay, so it's had 20 minutes of baking. You can see there, there is mm, some, some yellowing to it. You can see it on the turn, but not a huge amount. Holding it against this tray here gives a reasonable indication as to the level of yellowing that has occurred after over 20 minutes in the UV curing station. Not too bad. Quick coat of clear lacquer and then have added it to the chandelier. The challenge is, can you spot the 3D printed one? It is of course there, looking much better than the FTM counterpart. From the side, you can barely tell that it isn't one of the original glass chandelier pieces and had I done the tip solid, you probably wouldn't have noticed at all. Obviously I've got to do a few of these chandelier pieces, so I decided to print another one. Um, the first one, as I mentioned, was slightly overexposed, so I measured uh, a known thickness of the chandelier and used that, uh, the size that was printed on the actual model versus what it should have been to, to reduce the exposure time from 15 seconds to 14 seconds, and that seems to have worked much better for this model. I also reduced some of the supports at the bottom so that it wasn't so much of a conglomeration, and uh, that has also worked better. So that's pretty much it from me. I am quite impressed with this resin. I think given how inexpensive it is for a sort of more engineering performance resin, it performs really well. And the fact that you can make it work on a standard LCD printer if you want to means that pretty much anybody could use this resin, be it if you have a, uh, an LCD printer, a monochrome LCD printer, or a uh, SLA printer, you could make this resin work for you, which is great. You will probably get better results if you're using monochrome printer or an SLA printer, um, because as I discussed previously, the longer you have that exposure on, especially with a clear resin, the more leakage you're going to get out the sides and the less sharp detail you're gonna get when you're actually printing. But for a part like this, with a 14 second layer time on a LCD printer, the part came out pretty well okay. So maybe for high detail functional models, it's not gonna work. But for more standard things where the absolute resolution doesn't have to be perfect, then even an LCD printer can work with this resin as well. Transparency wise, it probably is the best transparent resin I've ever tested. Um, I haven't used loads, but I have been resin printing right back since the Form 1 Plus came out so quite a long time and I have tested a few over the years mainly with an idea to do this uh, but most of them have yellowed quite heavily and I don't think this is going to yellow anywhere near as much certainly the UV exposure test showed that the the rate of discoloration isn't going to be too bad